why crop combination analysis is so important now if let's say i am a farmer i have one hectare of land with me if i want to grow crops in that land parcel how many crops should i select how much area should be assigned to each of the crop now these are all the questions that exist and these methods that we understand for crop combination analysis helps us to answer this question but before we move towards crop combination let's have a quick look on the urban area in the urban area what happens is there is functional specialization when i say functional specialization this term means it's very very relative if i say place a produces good glass is is a good center for glass industry place b is a good center for let's say pottery industry now this is functional in nature probably place b could also have glass industry but since a have an additional advantage to it the functional specialization shifts towards a and b does not reap the benefit of the same but that does not apply to the case of crop combination in the case of crop combination what happens in the case of crop combination it is specific to one particular area so it is not interdependent or it's not relative it's absolute so the cropping pattern of my land parcel would be independent and cropping pattern of your land parcel would be totally independent on what factors it would be based definitely the soil the water availability and all related factors required for crop production so it is absolute in nature it does not have the functional specialization requirement that exists now when i say crop combination ideally if i want to grow five crops for example i can divide my land parcel simply into five distinct sets and so if i have 100 hectares i can have 20 hectares of five different crops that can be grown but this is a hypothetical arrangement what happens in real world is something different so let's understand this weavers method with a very simple example i have percentage of various crops i have seven different crops the eight different crops that i have taken here and on the actual land on my land parcel here i see that 35% of the cropped area is bajra 23% for example is jowar 15% is cotton so on and so forth but if i take the real ground example if i take the real division i can say this 100 hectares has to be divided into 8 so 100 divided by 8 50 divided by 4 25 divided by 2 so 12.5 is the proportion of land hectare that i can assign to each of the crop but rather than those values this is the actual value that is visualized in the form now what is the most viable solution i need to find this out if i need to find out the most viable solution i need to find a method of crop combination which gives significant share to the proportion of the total cropped area what does this mean it means that i would have the hypothetical values with me so in the first case what i do is i take an example of monoculture monoculture means just one crop so assume that i crop only bajra no other crop so how would i determine my crop combination analysis in that scenario and in the second case i take two crops i give hypothetically 50 50% land area to both of those and then i say that what is the production outcome and i have certain values now once i have the values for all these steps that we would understand in a while i find out the values which is the least value the value that comes as a least value would be the number of the crops that are most suitable for this reason so we would proceed with this example to understand this weavers method better so under this weavers method 
we have sigma square as it is connoted as which is the crop combination analysis it is given as summation of xi minus x bar square divided by n n is the total number of crops now Note, in the Weaver's method, we take n, which is the total number of crops. This is not taken into account in Thomas method, which we would understand later. Xi is the real proportion of the land under cultivation and X bar is the hypothetical proportion. Okay, so when I say the hypothetical proportion, I would first take an example of a monoculture. So when I take an example of monoculture, what happens is in this scenario, I have bajra only as my monoculture crop. So my hypothetical value is 100. I have just one crop. I take it as 100. My observed value for bajra is 35.9. So, I find the difference and the summation of the difference. Now, here no summation, just one crop. So, the difference I would take directly. My difference comes up as minus 64.1 observed value minus the hypothetical value. So, this is the observed value. This is the hypothetical value. I take the difference is 64.1. I square this difference. As we can see, it's the summation of the square. So, 64.1 square. So, it is 104 sorry 4108.81 and then I divide this value by the total number of uh, crops so since it's a hypothetical assumption of monoculture I'm considering just one crop so I divide 4108.81 divided by 1 and my answer comes as 4108.81 this is the case with monoculture just bajra taken into account now in the same example I move with a twin culture or a dye culture approach where I take two crops which is bajra and jowar. So my hypothetical values are 50 and 50. My observed value are 35.9 and 23.7. I take the difference which is 14 uh, which is now from 50 I am taking 14.1 so minus 14.1 and minus 26.3 as the value. I square these values so the values come as 198.81 and 691.63. Now I sum up these values so the sum of the values come up as 8. 890.5 now since i have taken two crops into account i would divide this value by two so my value here would be 445.25 clear now i move forward i take three crops so the same problem is being solved as of now so i am now considering three crops bajra jowar and cotton so I give a weightage of 33.3, 33.3 and 33.3 to all these crops. Okay, when I give this weightage, I take the difference. So my values are 35.9, 23.7 and 15.2. Now I take the difference as plus 2.6. Uh, the next difference is minus 9.6 and 18.1. I square these differences which is 6.76. 92.16 and then 327.61 I add these as 426.53 I divide it by the total number of crops I have taken so 3 crops taken here I divided by 3 I get a value of 142.18 now this is when there were 3 crops now what I do is I take 4 crops so I remove this value I take 4 crops now 4 crops become very very easy 25, 25, 25. So my hypothetical values are 25, 25, 25 and 25. My actual values are 35.9, uh, 23.7, 15.2 and 11.4. Now I take the difference again. So those come as 10.9 minus 1.3. Uh, then we have uh, minus 9.8 and minus 13.6. I square these values as 106.81, 1.69, 96.04 184.94. I add these values, I add all the d squares, so summation of d square is 401.50 divided by 4 which lands up to 100.38. So this is my value with 4 crops. 
Now I continue the same process with five crop, six crop, seven crop, and eight crop. My values with five crops, let's say, comes to be one sixty nine point five. You can calculate it further. Values for six crop come around one thirty one point seven nine. With eight crops come around one thirty six point zero five, and with seven crops come as one thirty three point seven one. Now, as I said, what we take is the least value. So least value was with Which crop? Four crop. So I can say this parcel of land works well with four crops. So on this parcel of land, if I'm planning to have a cultivation, what would be the ideal way or ideal number of crops that should be grown, and in what combination? So four crops with the combination of those crops which have been cropped in the highest percentage. So uh, I forgot to mention that in the beginning. the idea here is we arrange the crops in the uh, descending order so highest proportion crop area at the first and lowest proportion crop area at the last so this is again important but this was not the end weavers method was definitely too good but it brought about a lot of criticism with it the first criticism is it ignores the deviation sign as we took the difference of this the square of the difference so the difference sometimes was coming negative sometimes was coming positive but we were ignored it because he took the square of the deviation so that was one of the drawbacks and the next important drawback that was pointed out was that for higher number of crops or uh, the functions the theoretical percentage goes down and so the deviations that occur towards the end are highly underestimated so there is no chance that if we take a huge number of crops the proportion would go up significantly as was the case with monoculture we have seen the values were significantly higher but as we moved with increasing number of crops the values declined significantly so towards the end if the number of crops are too much there is theoretical percentage which reduces and uh, so the deviation by the last ones are usually underestimated so that was again one of the drawbacks so with all all these drawbacks there were numerous other models that were suggested including one suggested by thomas where thomas said that since we are taking uh, we are dividing the crops with the monoculture approach a biculture approach we are saying hypothetically it should be 100 hypothetically it should be 50 50 but we were considered only 100 and forgot the remaining ones that should not be the case if the first crop is considered as 100 the remaining should be considered as 0 0 and the d square should be calculated in proportion to it which was a concept which was ignored by weaver accounted by thomas and therefore this was again one of the drawbacks a next significant drawback was cited by rafiulla and rafiulla said that this was uh, as a modification of the weavers model because if we are trying to apply the same concept to the functional classification of the towns we would have to have a difference of the deviation the positive and the negative deviations and then we should take the square of those into account uh, the summation of those into account so that was some of the major drawbacks which were cited with the weavers model and therefore revised versions by thomas and rafiulla were brought into account